Confucius said, humility is the solid foundation of all virtues. One of the great dangers of leadership is allowing success and the celebration that comes with it to distract you from your mission and values, as well as allowing increasing power to manifest into dark side behaviours. Writers such as Kyle discuss the role of ego and mechanisms for keeping the ego in check. Similarly, Jim Collins in his book Good to Great highlights that companies that make the leap from being simply good to being market leaders all have what he termed as level five leaders. These leaders all demonstrated transformational leadership characteristics, though Collins found that they were also possessed of little, if any, ego, or what he described in them as being self-effacing behaviours. Kuzas and Posner also described dark side behaviours related to ego as hubris. Hubris can be best described as extreme or foolish pride and dangerous overconfidence. All of these leadership writers offer the advice that humility is the primary tool that leaders can use to resolve the conflicts and contradictions of leadership. One seeming contradiction is that leaders are expected to be at the front, both in terms of leading vision and values, as well as defending their followers, but at the same time they need to share credit and allow team members to believe that the team were responsible for success. In fact, some of the oldest advice on leadership and humility date back before even the Greek and Roman writers of the classics. Ancient Chinese writers such as Sun Tzu and Lao Tzu echo the words of Collins and Kuznets and Posner. Hence a commander who advances without any thought of winning personal fame and withdraws in spite of certain punishment, whose only concern is to protect his people and promote the interests of his ruler, is the nation's treasure. A leader is best when people barely know he exists, when his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Contemporary scholars such as Morris, Brotheridge and Urbanski have tried to place this advice into the context of leadership theory by noting that humility in leadership serves several potential functions. It causes leaders to act in a manner that is primarily other-enhancing rather than self-enhancing, a key concept in transformational leadership. Humility acts to shield the leader from the need to receive public adulation and may assist in shunning such attention. Humility contributes to organisational performance by diverting power and resources downward towards followers, enhancing organisational learning and avoiding senior leader empire building. Further, Morris and his colleagues, through a review of the humility literature from ancient China to today's theories of emotional intelligence, as well as theories of transformational authentic and servant leadership, came to define humility as a personal orientation founded on a willingness to see the self accurately and a propensity to put oneself in perspective. Morris and his colleagues further noted that authentic humility involves neither self-abasement nor overly positive self-regard but rather a balanced view of self. They saw humility as being composed of three distinct dimensions, each aligned with contemporary understanding of effective leadership practices as follows. Firstly, self-awareness. A consistent theme in the literature on the topic of humility has been the recognition that a key element of humility is the ability to understand one's strengths and weaknesses. This requires the leader to have an enduring orientation to objectively appraise their abilities and limitations. Secondly, openness, an implied aspect of knowing one's weaknesses, is an awareness of personal limitations or imperfections. Humility requires an understanding that there are things beyond one's control and things that you are yet to learn. This suggests that being humble requires being open to views of others in terms of feedback on your performance, but also to new ideas and ways of knowing. In other words, humility involves the willingness to learn from others. Finally, transcendence. The third factor of humility is a continuous striving to improve the self and one's limits with the goal of understanding ever broader perspectives and an acceptance of something bigger and more important than self. This requires a leader to gain a balanced perspective of their place in the bigger picture and an appreciation of the role played by others in this scheme. Hoekstra, Bell and Peterson report that one very important implication for leaders is that perfection is unattainable. We are human and as such we must strive for balance rather than perfection. The challenge, of course, is that the environment of leadership is constantly changing, as are our followers, while we as leaders, it is hoped, are growing and learning. As the balance will always be shifting, 
we will constantly need to realign to maintain balance. And remember, humility is the solid foundation of all virtues.